Hello again and uh, welcome to the Corner Studio here in my garage and uh, we need to consult the high-tech teleprompter here. You can see it's got a lot of writing on it so it must be a good show ahead of us. This is Friday Evening Camera Talk episode 40 and uh, our centerpiece tonight is I want to talk about the ZF and the Z8, their viewfinders and their LCD screens and how they stack up to each other. We've got uh, part of that segment, I just got them on the uh, tripod right next to each other and we talk about them for a little while. I've learned some things over the months and uh, we'll get to that. I do want to do a bit of housekeeping first. We like bringing things back on the channel that we've talked about previously and uh, this is the Mindshift Backlight 45L. I've been using this thing exclusively for over a week now and that includes putting it in and out of the vehicle, carrying it on my back, getting gear in and out of it and I have to say I, I am very pleased that I went on and, and took the plunge with this thing because as much as I like the Backlight 36L, that green one that I've had on the channel before, uh, this bag may be everything that I've ever hoped for in a camera bag and I thought I'd bring it back on and just say that because for the price I paid it was on sale at the time and uh, for 25% off and um, I just really, really am pleased with it. Uh, the other thing that we'll revisit here is the Ceramonic Blink 500 B2 Plus. This, uh, I'm going to just call it a $129 wonder. And um, I've showed this kit here, I guess, about a week or 10 days ago on the channel. This is what the uh, mic looks like. I've got the little pom pom on it. Hopefully, now when I'm doing videos and I draw a breath, you don't hear that sound. <laughs> because uh, I, I noticed that in the editing and um, I know it was probably bothering people but you're too nice to say it. Um, so I've been using this uh, set of mics here and I tell you it makes me want to take the rest of my microphones in and trade them in on something uh, on another set of these but unfortunately I've got my other ceramonics kind of shoved in that compartment there and I may reserve this for using out in the field because they are that nice and what I'm going to do is drop a clip in here shortly this is of uh, Bowman Bay State Park which is uh, not too far of a drive for me and it's part of the Deception Pass uh, park systems and they got a great setup down there with uh, a lot of nice hiking and uh, wildlife opportunities. So we were at Bowman Bay and uh, I did a short clip. It's about two minutes actually, it's not that short, but uh, the thing to keep in mind is I was using this outside in some awful circumstances. It was uh, just windy and uh, the worst thing that you could hope for trying to test microphones and I think they held up. So why don't we look at that clip and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. You guys can tell me what you think. Here we are uh, set up at the campsite and um, it's really windy and overcast. Conditions are kind of adverse and uh, here shortly I'll film the rest of the campground and you can see how many uh, other people want to contend with it. So you see we're kind of tucked into a great spot up there. It's uh, right over the water and um, there's the view. It is a little early in the season, but uh, you can see that the campground, um, it's practically empty. Quite windy today, but um, I guess uh, people just really don't want to camp when things are kind of adverse. So there's the upper loop of the campground, and uh, scrolling around, you can see where the lower loop kind of comes out. and. Uh, it's all nicely situated on the water here. There's not really any terrible spots here in the campground. So this park here has a uh, tribute to the uh, Civilian Conservation Corps. And there's a building down below with some exhibits. And um, if you notice in the background, the flagpole there with the flags uh, getting blown about, that'll tell you how windy it is. be our campsite up about where I'm pointing and um, if 
you scroll around, um, you can see just a beautiful view of the uh, waterfront here. So from the campground um, off this way, you can hike out that way where I'm pointing and it um, heads over to an adjacent state park, uh, Rosario Beach, where we go sometime there to um, film wildlife. They have some interesting tidal pools and um, it, it extends out over the water and uh, we have found um, during nesting season it's, it's a good bird nesting site. So we're here on the day use side of the park and uh, about where the center of the lens is now there's a trail that walks a good ways uh, out that way and um, we often come here uh, looking for wildlife. Okay, so we just saw that uh, clip about uh, Bowman Bay Park, and uh, I think it's a great way to show off the uh, new mic system. And uh, the centerpiece of our show tonight, as promised, is the uh, Nikon ZF versus the Z8. And uh, that contest is overweighted because the Z8 uh, costs a lot more than the ZF, and it's got more capabilities, but you find more similarities than differences if you look at the EVF and the uh, LCD screen on the back. So uh, why don't we take a look at that clip now? Okay, so when we're looking at the uh, Z8 here and the ZF, the uh, most obvious thing that we notice is the size. The Z8 is a bigger camera. The ZF is uh, more diminutive in size. It's got the uh, kind of uh, retro stylings people like to call it. Um, the EVFs on these are supposed to be pretty much matched up the same. You get uh, 3.6 million dots uh, out of both of them. That's the output. Uh, the ZF is 21 millimeters. The uh, Z8 is 23. Slightly bigger on the slightly bigger camera. I can't tell a difference when I'm putting my eye up to them and looking through them. The 2 millimeters, 21 versus 23. It's not discernible to me just using them. Um, I will say that the uh, LCD screens, now, they are supposed to be identical, 3.2 inches, 3.2 inches, 2.1 million dots of clarity, 2.1 million dots of clarity. But I notice a difference using this screen. Uh, it seems like it's a bigger and more useful screen to me. I think it's the way uh, the ergonomics of the camera. Now, I've had the uh, ZF in the household since last fall. Um, I thought when I ordered this that, and you can see here, uh, Nikon calls this an articulating screen. They call this the four axis tilt. And uh, I'm just going to pull this out and uh, show you how each of these uh, guys, the movement that you get. You can turn this to either side. You can pull this out. You can tilt it down or up. I tend to pull this out and tilt it up to where I'm looking down into that screen when I'm using the screen. And I find it super, super handy in this uh, configuration. Lines up with the lens. As a video guy, uh, I, I didn't know how much I was going to like this until I had this in hand. You know, you line up with the lens and the viewfinder and it seems like something magical there. I thought that I would like this articulating screen more when I first got it. And I do like the fact that this is very tidy. You can turn the, the uh, screen in and uh, completely protect it with the outside cover. And I think, you know, for shoving it in a bag and um, just carrying it around if you're out, um, you know, using it, this is uh, a benefit over just having the screen exposed. But the main feature of this, being able to articulate this and point it to the front, uh, that's a feature I thought I was going to use, and I haven't been using it hardly at all. By the time I step 
a few feet in front of the camera. Yes, you can see the red uh, line around it that shows that you're filming video, but I can't see what's going on in a screen this size when I'm a few feet away from it. And I suppose a person holding this camera up at arm's length to uh, like vlog with it and film yourself, maybe that flip out screen is, is going to do you some good. But I have found, contrary to what my original thought was about that, that uh, I'm liking this configuration less than I'm liking this one. And from what I've uh, seen on YouTube and read, photographers tend to prefer this. Videographers like, uh, you know, these offset screens or, you know, with the box style cameras, the, uh, the, the monitor that mounts elsewhere, either to the side or the top. But I'm finding that um, I like this actually less than the regular um, you know, screen there, but uh, it's differences in cameras. We're dealing with a much more expensive rig here. I find that f for what you pay and what it does, what it can accomplish, I love the ZF. The uh, screens have kind of become a minor thing with me. I don't really, um, so much when I'm using this camera, I'll tend to focus on using the viewfinder. Here it's a mix. I'll use the viewfinder when I need to, and I'll use. I'm relying on the screen a lot more here. But uh, this is one of those things I thought I'd update the channel on, and um, we'll get back to the main segment now. So uh, that was the ZF and the Z8 kind of side by side, and these are both cameras that I really like, and I understand the differences between them. But um, sometimes it's just you know, refreshing to put the two of them together and, uh, you know, you can see the differences and uh, kind of think about the different capabilities. I, I really just love both of those cameras, but um, I guess over time, um, you know, you got a soft spot depending on what you're doing. If I want to be assured of my very best output on the channel, I will take the Z8 every time. If I want to just have a smaller rig that I consider kind of fun, that fills a lot of gaps and does a really competent job, I'll reach for the ZF. So um, anyway, there we have it. But uh, I tell you what, um, we've hit a good point here. I, I was out on the road and a little off pace this week. And uh, as you saw the show, we've put it up on a different uh, day than we often do. Um, so. I'll say uh, thanks for joining us tonight, and uh, we hope to see you again in another video really soon. And what I'm going to do is roll the wildlife clips, and uh, we'll sign off for this one. So take care.